this is the homework for linear factorization. So number seven, let's see if we can see that a little clearer. Let's see if I can focus in. It's as good as it's gonna get. All right, number seven. I first need to, to be able to factor this. I, I'm gonna try to factor by grouping them together. So if I look at the first two terms, x squared they have in common. So factor out an x squared. The last two, 9 goes into it evenly, and if you divide, you get 4x plus 3. Because these match, it's factorable. So we have 4x plus 3. That is fine. That's a linear factor. Here, x squared plus 9, I need to make equal to 0. If I solve this, so subtract 9 and take the square root, the answer is positive and negative 3, but because it's imaginary, the square root of a negative number, it's 3i. All right, now we're going to put it all together. So what's the linear factorization here? So we have 4x plus 3. That's a linear factor. Then we have 4 subtract 3i, and uh, I mean x subtract 3i and x plus 3i. Order doesn't matter. And there's the linear factorization of it. If I asked you for the zeros, you would get negative 3 quarters. You would get positive and negative 3i. Done. So the linear factorization, all of them are linear factors and then the zeros that come from each linear factor. All right, number eight. Again, I'm gonna factor this one. See if you can do this too. Take the first two terms, x squared, they have in common, you're left with two x plus seven. The last two, eight, and that gives me two x plus seven. That way I know they match. So we have two x plus seven, which is linear, x squared plus eight, so we're gonna take x squared plus eight, which is a quadratic, and we're gonna solve it to be able to write linear factors in the zeros. So we're gonna subtract eight. When I take the square root, it could be positive or negative. The square root of a negative is imaginary, and then it's the square root of eight. Now, I'm gonna teach you again how to simplify this if you want to learn this, and that eight can be written as four times two. So this could be four times two. And the square root of four is two. And what's left behind is two. And that two i, we could write it as two i. All right, so what's the linear factorization then? So we already had two x plus seven. That's a linear factor. Then I have x plus two i root two and x minus two i root two. So those are all the linear factors. What are the zeros that come from there? So the first linear factor, it's negative seven over two, and then it's plus and minus two i root two. Number nine. Here's number nine. All right, I'm gonna do this by factoring. This is actually a difference of squares, so I'm gonna take the square root of each one. So the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 256, there is a number times itself that equals that, that's 16. So it is x squared subtract 16 and x squared plus 16. Take the, keep doing another difference of squares. You get x plus four and x minus four. Now x squared plus 16 is not factorable. So we're gonna make it equal to zero and find the zeros. So I'm gonna subtract 16, and then when I take the square root, the square root of a negative number is imaginary, and the square root of 16 is four. So it's plus and minus four i. So now I'm gonna do the linear factorization. So we have x plus four, we have x subtract four, then what we just came up with, which is uh, 4i, both adding and subtracting. So now these are all linear factors. 
if I multiply them all together and simplify, it would equal what it was before. Now the last step, the zeros. So what are the zeros of this? So the first two factors are positive and negative 4, and then positive and negative 4i. And there are all the zeros. That's real and imaginary. Number 10. This is a trinomial. So I'm going to factor it as a trinomial, but using x squared. So two numbers that multiply to 80 and add to 24 are 20 and 4. So 20 times 4 is 80, and they add up to 24. This is not factorable anymore. So we're going to take both of them. So x squared plus 20 equals 0. And we're going to solve it. So when I solve it, it's positive or negative. And I'm just going to leave it at root 20. So i and then root 20. We're just going to leave it that way right now. So it's imaginary because you're taking the square root of a negative number. And the square root of 20 is irrational. So I'm just leaving it as root 20. The other, x squared plus 4 equals 0. When I solve this, again, you're taking the square root of a negative. So it's plus or minus. Again, it's going to have i, but the square root of 4 is 2. So it's 2i compared to i root 20. So put this all together. The linear factorization will have one that says x plus i root 20, another that says x minus i root 20, another that says x plus 2i, and another that says x subtract 2i. So those are all the linear factors. And then what are the zeros? Well, they're already written out. So if I just write them over again, plus and minus i root 20 and plus and minus uh, 4, uh, 2i. All right, two left. Number 11 and number 12 to work out together. So number 11, if I wanted to find the zeros, if I wanted to factor this, uh, the first thing I actually notice is that I could factor out a 3 in front. Notice 3 goes into everything evenly. So I'm going to factor out a 3 in front. So that would give me x cubed plus x squared minus 2. So you factored the 3 out in front. Then I'm not going to worry about that. That positive and 3 in front is not linear. It's a constant. And it doesn't give a 0 anything. So my answer is just going to have a 3 in front. But now just focus on what's inside the parentheses. So this is not factorable inside. So I need to create a list. But by doing that, the list is really small now. So positive and negative 1 positive negative 2. Once I factor out the 3, I now have a really short list compared to beginning where it could have fractions. And if I add this up, so if I want to know, hey, what goes into it, it's 1, 1, 0, negative 2. So don't forget the 0 for the missing power. It adds up to 0, so positive 1 works. And what I'm left with is x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. So I already found a 0. I'm going to change that to a linear factor at the end. Next, how do I solve this? It's not factorable. So the only way I can solve this is either completing the square or the quadratic formula. Now in this case, the completing the square is simple because it's 1x squared and an even number. So what I'm going to do is take the linear and you divide it by 2 and square it. I'll do it up here. Divide it by 2 and square it. And you can see you're going to add 1 to both sides. So this is x plus 1 squared. This is negative 1. When I get x plus 1 squared by itself, you take the square root to both sides. That's positive and negative. The square root of negative 1 is i. And then the last step is to subtract 1. So we subtracted 1 plus and minus i. So we found the solutions. Now can I write the factors that go with that solution? So let's do that together. It's a little bit challenging, but I know you can do it. So if positive 1 is a 0, the factor working backwards, the factor has an opposite sign. So the factor that goes with positive 1 is x subtract 1. They go together. I think you can see that. The next one's a little challenging. For these, we're going to go x subtract parentheses, and then we plug in negative 1 plus i. And again, I go x subtract parentheses and go negative 1 subtract i. So in other words, the template is to go x subtract whatever the answer is. So x subtract 1, x subtract 
negative 1 plus i. x subtract negative 1 subtract i. So my template is x subtract. If I have a binomial there where there's 2, I need to use parentheses after I do that subtracting, and it's done. So that's the linear factorization. I don't need to distribute. And then the zeros, that's simple. Positive 1, and then negative 1 plus and minus i. Done. So a little bit challenging. And remember, it's OK to even have to go back and watch and do it again from the beginning if you want to go over it a second time. Number 12. So again, notice what I notice here, that 2 goes into everything evenly. That just makes life so much easier. Oh, you know what I forgot back here at number 11? Let's go back here. What should I have had at the beginning that I forgot? Equals, there needs to be a 3 in front. So let's do that. Pretend I didn't forget it. So don't forget that in front. That 3 needs to be in front, and then the rest followed. Just like this one, number 12. What did I notice about number 12? And it makes it easier. It's not factorable right away, except for, the, for one number. It makes the, the list smaller if I can factor it out. So 2 goes into everything. So I'm going to divide, factor out. I can't get rid of it. I just factor it out in front. So that divide 2 out of everything. And already now, it's so much smaller. And when I create my list, I look at 15 to create my list. So I have plus or minus 1, 3, 5, and 15. That's way better than 30 and better than 2 in front where you'd have fractions. So that's good. And now we're going to 1, 1, negative 1, and 15. So I know positive 1 doesn't work because it doesn't add up to 0. Because I have the answer key, I know which one does work. Now for you, you would have to try until you actually find the number that worked on that list that gives you 0. I know it's negative 3, so I'm kind of cheating that way. So I can see there it worked. So we have x squared subtract 2x plus 5. So now what's left over I'm going to solve. I notice 1x squared and an even number. So that means I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to subtract 5. And then how do I find the number to add to both sides to make it a perfect square? I take negative 2, divide it by 2, and square it. So that makes negative 1 and squared. So that's positive 1. So add 1 to both sides. So we have x subtract 1 squared. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Take the square root to both sides. Now, when you take the square root, we know the answer is positive and negative. The square root of a negative number is imaginary, and the square root of 4 is 2. So it's plus and minus 2i. Add 1. And now you have all your solutions. So here's a solution, and here's a solution. So now we're going to do the linear factorization. So when I do the linear fa factorization, they're all going to be linear factors. Here's the template again. You're going to go x subtract whatever the solution is. So x subtract negative 3 means you add 3, because you subtract a negative. Or you change the sign. But I just wanted you to see the template. We're going to go x subtract. Because it's a binomial, binomial number, we're going to use parentheses. So we're going to put in 1 plus 2i, and then x subtract 1 minus 2i. So those are all the linear factors using the solutions, or zeros. So the zeros have the opposite sign. So it's negative 3, uh, 1 plus 2i, and 1 subtract 2i. So you can see the solutions there inside the linear factorization. All right, this is Mr. G Math. I'm proud of you for doing your work. And until next time.